You know, we've talked a lot about homebrew here on the channel, but what about homebrew feats? You know, Ted, that's a great idea. Let's talk about the top homebrew feats from D&D Beyond. I'm Nerdarchist Ted. I'm Nerdarchist Dave. Welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. Now let's see if these feet stink. See what I did there? Oh. All right. So today we're going to be talking about the most uh, viewed D uh, feats on D&D Beyond. Um, we sorted them through and, uh, you know, that's why we're calling them the most popular. They may not be the best right, rated, but more people were interested in the the uh, the titles of these or you know, at least the concept of these than anything else. Did that hold up after after they read them? Maybe, maybe not. You can go over there and click around. Uh, as long as you're logged into a free account, I believe you can look at all the homebrew stuff, uh, which, I mean, is, is only fair to mention that D&D Beyond is a sponsor of Nerdarchies, this video in particular. So you can go over there and see all the things, you know, use D&D Beyond to make your characters, run your encounters, uh, set up your campaigns, or just use it as a huge database of all things official D&D. It's a great resource that we love using. Description down below so you can actually go over and look at the feats that we're going to talk about. All right, so, you know, with these particular feats, you know, we sorted it, as Dave says, you know, by the most viewed. So we have Candle Burning at Both Ends, Gunslinger, and Whipmaster as the ones that we're going to talk about today. Now, I know if you happen to do what Dave says and went over to D&D Beyond and sort of them, that might change because, you know, time happens and things change all the time. But at the time that we sorted the list, yeah. these are the ones that were at the top. So our candle burning at both ends, we've got Wistful Moon and almost 23,000 views at this time. We've got Gunslinger, the Burger, and almost 19,000 views, and Whipmaster, Nezuminakai? I don't know how do you say that, uh, Ted. Uh, Apologies if we happen to butcher we're your totally, username. We totally did. It's like Zumina a cage? I'm not sure. And that is uh, just over 16,000 views. Um, so, candles burning at both ends, Gunslinger, Whipmaster, any of those interest you? Which one of those would you gravitate towards? Uh, are these things that you've kind of tried to make up feats for in the past, or maybe you've just done your own homebrew feats? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, don't forget to stop by that middle section that makes YouTube so happy. Help out the channel. Do those things like like, share, subscribe, comment, or, you know, even ring that notification bell. It makes YouTube happy, and it would certainly help us out. And as a quick reminder, remember Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, come back to the Nerdarchy YouTube channel because that's when we drop new videos. Now, all right, let, let's look at the very first one, the the top uh, the top most viewed, Ted. All right, so candle burning at both ends, as Dave says. Uh, you know, this one certainly intrigued me as it's apparently done to thousands upon thousands of other people on D&D Beyond. So let's dive into exactly what this is. Adventures often disregard grievous injuries to continue fighting at the expense of their future well-being. You gain the following benefits. Increase your constitution score by, by one to a maximum of 20. So it's a half feat, pretty cool. If you would fall to zero hit points or die, Instead, you may permanently mark a death saving throw as failed and your hit points become equal to one third your total health rounded up. If all death saving throws are marked as failed, then your character dies and cannot be resurrected outside of divine intervention. If a death save is marked failed by this ability, then you require that many less successful death saving throws in order to stabilize. And it's got a tagline of, I can't die, I'm too busy for that. Rollins, uh, captain of the watch. You know, it sounds cool, you know, up front, but like, it really has kind of like lowered um, the life expectancy of your character. So, I, you know, I think like a less extreme version of this would be kind of cool. You know, maybe if there was a way to get rid of those permanent death saves, uh, on your character sheet, because let's face it, it's a feat that you can only use twice. Uh, that really does, you know, get rid of the the usefulness. Maybe if there was a constitution saving throw that if you failed it, then it was marked permanently. Uh, or if there was a way to remove those permanent death marks. But other than that, this one, 
it's not too powerful. I will tell you that much. Um, if this is what one of my <laughs> players wanted to spend their resources on, I'd be like, okay, if you want to do that. Um, it's intriguing. It's interesting conceptually. I think there's something there. Uh, but for me, this would be a hard pass. So for, for me, in my particular games, I enjoy giving out, you know, uh, perks for, mm. you know, adventures and things. Uh, stat bumps and feats are frequently in my games, you know, something that I'm, I'm able to put out as a story reward. So if you were to do something, you know, to help out, you know, a god of death or, you know, some something, uh, you know, maybe even in, in view of life, uh, you know, this could be something that might be a perk. And since it is a you may do, uh, it is a it is a decision that a character gets to make, a player gets to make at the table of like, look, you get to use this cool ability twice that instead of dropping, instead of dying, you get to heal a third of your hit points and keep the fight going. I agree with Dave, having something to be able to kind of erase those marks and get more use out of it would be fantastic. And, you know, perhaps that's part of the further story reward. Um... I don't know if I would take this as a character, but as Dave says, I would certainly allow it in my games. <laughs> yeah. And also, like you said, as a boon, yeah, that that's kind of, that's perfect, right? Again, like, I, even as a boon, it might be like, well, maybe you can wish away or you know, something, right? So what do we got next? All right. So Gunslinger's next. Why don't you get into that one, Dave? All right. Gunslinger. We got some prereqs. Requires proficiency with a handgun. And a dexterity of 13, so, you know, not anyone's good enough to be a gunslinger. Uh, and we get four benefits. You ignore the loading property of handguns, pistols, and revolvers, which with you are proficient. Uh, also probably good for an artificer, I guess. Add a plus one to determine initiative in any turn where you draw a handgun from a holster uh, to make the attack action and you are within 30 feet of the target. Being within five feet of a hostile creature doesn't impose disadvantage on your ranged attack rolls with any handgun. When you use an attack action and attack with one hand at weapon, you can use a bonus action to attack with a handgun you are holding. So basically, it allows you to fire two pistols at once. Uh, the thing with this feat is it requires some very specific things. Like, one, obviously, you have to be using firearms in your game. And to really get the most out of it, you kind of have to be using, you know, at least a six shooter. If you're just using, you know, kind of a, a black powder weapon, it, it's not going to be as useful as it's kind of worded. Although, like, nothing about this is like, this is super powerful. I wouldn't let my players use this either. You know, I we don't use a lot of firearms in our games, um, but it's, it's mainly, you know, not because that we don't allow it or any of that kind of stuff. We have no problem with it. Um, you know, it's just, has not really been a big draw to the typical fantasy crowd. Um, but as with the rise of Eberron and with, you know, the artificer, there's definitely more things. The gunslinger subclass that, you know, Matt Mercer did, we're definitely seeing, you know, more things, you know, evolve and, you know, move in this direction. So, you know, some players are gravitated towards that's something new, that's something interesting. Uh, so you could definitely go with this if you really wanted. Uh, you know, we definitely have seen, you know, the, the, the drawl of, oh, well, I want to fire two crossbows and pew, pew, pew. Uh, but you know, here we kind of have the, the actual gun version of that. So, you know, again, not too powerful, but I don't see this getting a lot of use in, in our particular games. Yeah. I think I would change like the fourth one to be like any, or add it in there somewhere, right? Anytime you use the attack action or an action, a bonus action, however you want to word it to fire a pistol, you can include the draw as part of the of the firing action, right? So, you know, it's fairly common to see a bandolier of pistols so that you can draw, fire, draw, fire, draw, fire. Um, I think that would make this a little bit better and more useful. Um, but as it is not too powerful, it has some cool features and it's very thematic for someone that is a gunslinger. Absolutely. Take us on out, Ted, with the last one. All right, so Whipmaster, as we've already said, prerequisite, you need a dex of 13 uh, or higher, and proficiency with a whip. You have mastered the ways of the whip and the intricacies of such an exotic weapon, 
and you gain the following benefits. You gain a plus one bonus to attack rolls you make with a whip. When you hit with a melee attack using a whip, you deal an additional one die four damage of whatever type the whip deals. While you are wielding a whip, other creatures provoke opportunity attacks from you when they enter your reach. You have advantage on ability checks and attack made to disarm or grapple enemies when using a whip as part of that check or the attack. So for me, I think all of this is great. You know, whips have a very low damage threshold. Uh, the, you know, plus one to attack is probably the most dangerous aspect of this feat since fifth edition does have, you know, that bounded accuracy. But there are other things that uh, fall in the spectrum of of getting giving some minor bonuses, so it's not anything to to really you know squabble over. You know, making the whips do an extra die four damage brings it up to two die four, which is only a slightly higher uh, damage ratio than a longsword, which would be a one handed weapon. Uh, so, unless you are like totally trying to be like the whip master using two whips at the same time. I don't think that's in any way, shape, or form really overpowered. Uh, and I love the idea of, you know, enemies provoking when they enter your reach with a whip. Uh, you know, I had a character in a game that I ran that would absolutely love and would have taken this feat uh, had it had it been, you know, available during that gameplay. Yeah, I mean, it's still not quite as good as um, Sentinel. And uh, I, the only thing is, I don't, I don't know that I would do the advantage to ability checks to disarm and grapple enemies uh, as using using the whip. That part seems a little weird. Um, also, like I guess the idea is if you're grappling the enemies with the whip, you're using it to like kind of like tie them up or whatever. Uh, I might try and do something different there, um, but. I, like I said, I don't think I would do it. I don't think I would make an ability check advantage. Given how, uh, you know, mechanically weak the disarm maneuver is, uh, mm. I would be cool with with disarm getting advantage. Uh, so I maybe maybe scrap grapple completely, um, you know, from that particular line, and I would be I would be completely cool with that. But I mean, you know, I, I, don't, so I don't. I think I would rather do something cooler, right? Like if you're like, you can use the whip to disarm someone and you can choose where it goes. Right. Including your hand right. where like you can actually grab it and kind of flick it to your own hand or, you know, flick it away 10 feet in any direction uh, from where you are, you know, whatever the reach of the whip is. I think I would like, go, I would go that route. Uh, I would, I would absolutely love that. And that I think would actually change the concept of disarm from a, you know, essentially a meaningless action because typically when a disarm happens, the weapon drops to their feet. Interacting with an object is a free action on a turn. Yeah. Uh, so unless you're trying to remove the concept of, oh, I'm going to leave their their area. Oh, they don't have a weapon currently. So like all they can do is punch me. Uh, you know, like it, it's practically meaningless these days to, to do that. Yeah, you, you have to disarm them and follow that disarm with, uh, can I use my interact with an object to kick the weapon away? <laughs> uh, so, yes, in those cases, that would be fantastic. Uh, but so changing that to completely, you know, when you disarm, you know, you can you can p position the weapon somewhere of your choice. Uh, you can. Yeah. So in theory, out of their reach or into your hand yeah. thematically, I think that would be cooler than just like advantage. Absolutely. So what do you guys think? Are these uh, feats that you would add to your game? If you want another video, check out D&D Feats 5e Multiclassing Without Multiclassing. And if you'd like to help support us uh, to keep making awesome videos like this, then you might want to consider, you know, joining us over on Patreon. As a thank you, you'll receive monthly 5e content for players and DMs alike and a chance to game up with us and more. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.